that we all read about. Let's read the Old Testament. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Troy Livingston, and I am the class coordinator and instructor of police for the 282nd basic training class. At this time, I ask you to join me in welcoming today's graduates in the 282nd basic training class. Members of the 282nd, and ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing and direct your attention to the Hutchinson Police Department Honor Guard for the presentation of the colors and the Pledge of Allegiance. Honor Guard, halt! Center, stay! Colors, halt! Present, arm! I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order, arm. Right shoulder, strike. Center, stay. Mark down, mark. Hold, mark. Thank you. Please be seated. The Wall of Honor was designed as a reminder of those KLETC graduates who have died in the line of duty. The names and photographs of the 27 individuals memorialized preserve their memories and give family and friends and law enforcement officers the opportunity to remember those who made the ultimate sacrifice in service to the citizens of Kansas. At this time, we'll observe a moment of silence to honor the 27 KLETC graduates no longer with us.
Thank you. All right, members of the 282, finally your day. I am proud of your accomplishments and proud of what you've done, and it's been a lot of fun to be your class mentor. I'll make a few brief uh, comments, mostly because I know you're anxious to graduate and go home, but you're still going to listen to the class dad for just a little while. First, uh, be humble. Don't let your ego cloud your judgment to let it fill you with a sense of superiority. Don't let someone, uh, someone's frustration uh, affect you personally. And just when you think you have this career figured out, something will happen to humble you. And uh, many of you may have been humbled yesterday in officer survival training. Engage your community. Always remember that you're a part of the community, not apart from it. Listen to what they have to say and communicate with them. The best solutions are community-driven, community and you will not succeed without them. Keep in mind, our Kansas communities are wonderful to work for. Also, volunteer. Do something to help the community. Find your niche and spend time doing it. Volunteering will not only improve your community, but it will keep you centered and grounded. Also take care of your family. You will miss birthdays, holidays, and other milestone events, but tell them that you love them and spend as much time as you can with them. And read something every day. I know that's something you're anxious to do after 14 weeks of academy training, but we all know that knowledge is power and to succeed, you'll need to know the best practices in law enforcement, as well as what's happening in your community. And I always say this, if you're not reading, you're not leading. And then finally, don't tarnish the badge. Remember why you became a police officer or a deputy and never participate in any behavior on or off duty that will embarrass your family, city, county, department, profession, or even us here at KLETC. On behalf of the administration and everyone at KLETC, congratulations on completing basic training. It is my pleasure to introduce today's commencement speaker, Sheriff Jay Sameka. Sheriff Jay Sameka began his career with the Shawnee County uh, Sheriff's Office in 1992. He served as a correction specialist in a variety uh, of deputy and supervisory roles throughout his career with the Sheriff's Office to include patrol operations, fugitive warrants, court security, community service, public information officer, and SWAT team commander. He retired as under sheriff in October of 2020. He was elected as Morris County Sheriff in November of 2020 and is currently serving his, surf, his first term. Sheriff Sameka is a retired military officer. He served eight years in the United States Marine Corps from 1988 to 1996. He served in uh, during Operation Desert Shield. He served in the Kansas Army National Guard from 2005 to 2019. He retired from military service with the United States Army in 2019, having served multiple deployments in support of disaster relief, including Operation Spartan Shield and Operation Inherent Resolve. Sheriff Sameka is a graduate of the 132nd KLETC basic class. He has a certified public manager certificate from the University of Kansas, a bachelor's degree in criminal justice from Washburn University, and a master's degree in education from University of St. Mary. He played college football at Benedictine College and Washburn University and played for several years in uh, indoor football league, professional indoor football league. Sheriff Sameka is an assistant football coach at Council Grove High School. He coached various high school sports to include football, basketball, track, baseball, and softball over the last 30 years. Sheriff Sameka and his wife uh, reside in Council Grove and have three children. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, please welcome Sheriff Sameka. Good afternoon. It's an honor to have the opportunity to speak with you today. I must say this is the first time I've ever spoken in public with a mask on, so bear with me. Being the commencement speaker is extra special for me because one of my employees, Deputy Matt Cook, is a member of the 282nd graduating class. People often ask me, why do you do it? What's it like? 
Why did you want to be in law enforcement? What made you join? For me, it would take time to answer those questions for a lot of different reasons. To provide you a better understanding of a law enforcement officer, let me quickly tell you a little bit more about the type of person I am and the type of people I serve with. We are ordinary people performing community service that is oftentimes marked by acts of bravery and selfless acts of devotion to a cause bigger than ourselves. We could have done something else, but we chose to serve, knowing full well the hardships and dangers that we potentially face each and every day. My law enforcement brothers and sisters know and understand fear in a different way than other citizens do. It is not so much the fear of death or injury they think about, but what they are most terrified of is letting their fellow officers down. And because of that fear, they never do. Some people just never really understand it when strong men and women choose this job, just as they can't begin to understand the price paid so that they and their families can sleep safe and protected at night. The men and women graduating today made the decision to step forward and to serve and protect our communities. I pray we never run out of tough men and women like the ones I work with and the ones sitting on this stage today. Those are the ones willing to look beyond their own self-interest and comfortable lives and voluntary, voluntarily protect and serve our communities. Graduates, I feel like it is my duty to share some advice with you today. Here are 10 things that, that I have picked up along the way. Number one, think and act like a guardian and a protector. Remember, the cause is bigger than each of you. Selfless for service does not mean don't take care of yourself. Rest your mind, rest your body. Sleep is a powerful weapon. Number three, try to keep a balance of family, work, and hobbies. Remember to have fun and find, times, find time for things that bring you joy and balance. Seek advice, seek friendships, Seek building relationships and partnerships in your community. Remember, everyone is watching, evaluating, and judging your behavior and your actions. Six, acknowledge the people you serve. Wave, smile, and greet people that you don't even know. Seven, for your administrators and your supervisors, be a good follower. For your peers, be a good teammate. Eight, accept responsibility for your actions, own your mistakes, and use every experience as a building block of knowledge. Number nine, if there is an opportunity to lead, take it. 10, lastly and most importantly, always choose the path of integrity. The path of integrity distinguishes itself from the other paths because it is the right path. And in choosing that path, you will never get lost. Family and friends of the graduates, thank you for sharing your loved ones with us in this profession. They have one of the toughest jobs in the world as guardians and protectors of the people. They are essential and critical to the preservation of peace in our communities and in our nation. They will be asked to make many, many personal sacrifices during their careers, which inevitably will affect you as well. What gives us the strength to do this job each and every day and to never give up is our loved ones who understand why we do what we do, who support us and who pray for us every day. In closing, I'd like to congratulate, congratulate the graduates for successfully completing basic training. A special shout out to Morris County Deputy Matt Cook for his service as a class president. I'm proud of you, Matt. Thank you to the KLETC administration and staff for providing training, guidance, and mentorship to these graduates. Law enforcement in the state of Kansas is extremely fortunate 
to have these facilities and the men and women dedicated to the education of our officers. I think I can speak for all the police chiefs, sheriffs, and agency administrators in this room. We missed you and we need you back at work. Thank you and God bless you. All right, Sheriff Semeca, on behalf of the 282nd class, please accept this plaque as a thank you for taking time out of your day to share, share your thoughts with the graduates. It is important to recognize those student officers who have excelled in various professional skills during their basic training. Fitness is a key component in an officer's life. It helps them manage the daily stress they will face and aims, uh, aids them in maintaining a healthier lifestyle, which will enable them to better mitigate the dangers they may encounter. All members of the 282nd basic training class were active and engaged in a fitness routine during their time here at Haley DC. Some of them have gone the extra mile. The 200 mile club was created to recognize those student officers that complete 30 push-ups in a minute, 30 sit-ups in a minute, and they run a mile and a half run in 18 minutes or less. Additionally, uh, they have to log 200 miles outside of the classroom uh, by running, walking, cycling, or a combination of those activities. The 282nd basic training class has two officers that have completed these goals. Melissa Prada, uh, Officer Melissa Prada from the Junction City Police Department and Officer Andrew Orosio from the Augusta Department of Public Safety. Would you please stand to be recognized? We'd also uh, like to recognize one individual for his exceptional hard work and a substantial number of miles that he logged during his efforts in the 200 mile club. Officer Andrew Orosio, would you please join me uh, at the podium? Andrew has completed 226 miles as a member of the 200 mile club, the most miles completed for the basic training class. He also exceeded other physical requirements of the 200 mile club by achieving 83 push-ups in a minute, 42 sit-ups in a minute, and completing the mile and a half run in 11 minutes and 42 seconds. Officer Rocio, uh, you not only had the most miles, but you were also the most improved. This medal is awarded to you for logging the most miles and being the most improved. So please uh, join me in congratulating, congratulating Officer Rocio. Good job, buddy. Thank you. The top, uh, the firearms top shooter award also recognizes the student officer from the 282nd basic class for their firearms proficiency. Officer Noel Vogel from the Elwood Police Department, please join me at the podium. Officer Vogel has shown great skill and proficiency during both the firearms qualification and during the tactical shooting drills. Shooting is a perishable skill and requires constant effort to maintain your abilities. And you have shown that practice and hard work pays off. Officer Vogel, you are being awarded this medal uh, for your achievement as the top shooter. So please join me in congratulating Officer Vogel. And then I got one more recognition to make. Uh, there are times, that, uh, well, I'm sorry, uh, Officer Richard Messerly of the Burlington Police Department, would you please stand? Thank you. There are times at KLETC when a student officer uh, goes above and beyond to assist others. Officer Richard Messerly of the Burlington Police Department um, 
a few weeks ago helped a student who suffered a medical incident. Officer Messerly, uh, and his, he saw his classmate in need and without hesitation put his medical training to use and he helped lead a team of other students to assist EMS until um, they could get here and help the students. So please join me in recognizing Officer Messerly for his actions. Thank you. So I uh, pointed out Officer Messerly specifically because he helped lead the team, but I will tell you the class collectively uh, was doing everything they could, even if they didn't have medical training, and it was uh, pretty impressive to see them work. So I'd like to recognize the entire class as well. It's now time for the class president of the 282nd basic training class to deliver a few brief remarks on behalf of the graduating class. Ladies and gentlemen of the, and, um, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, the 282nd basic training class president, Deputy Matthew Cook of the Morris County Sheriff's Office. Good afternoon, special guests, colleagues, and families. Thank you for joining us today for the graduation of the 282nd class from the Kansas Law Enforcement Training Center. I want to begin by saying thank you to each one or everyone on this stage. Thank you for choosing this career during a time of political unrest, mass exodus of officers from their agencies. Each one of you answered a calling that screamed with every beat of your heart, a calling that said for you to give a voice to the voiceless, rest to the restless, and hope to the hopeless. Just remember, when you start to doubt yourself during these trying times, and you will, just remember why you're there in the first place and listen to your heart. I would like to thank the staff, or also like to thank the staff at KLATC for uh, helping us achieve our goals today by taking your time to impart your wisdom, knowledge, and life lessons upon us so that we may be successful after we leave here. But now, upon graduating, we sit forth on our careers. Each one of us have been gifted a burden that we must carry. Over the last few years, we have witnessed the actions of just a handful of officers that have caused cities to be burned to the ground. I cannot think of a single profession that could have caused the outrage that was directly associated with those actions and have that much of an impact on this country as a whole. This uh, should show you the sheer amount of responsibilities that this job carries with it and how easily it can be abused. It is now on our shoulders to show this country that those few actions do not dictate who we are as individuals or as an organization. I beg each of you to go into your communities and be willing to be the change that your citizens would want to see. Be willing to sit down and have those pers or personal conversations with your citizens. Will it be tough? Yes. Will some demand the impossible from you? Absolutely. But we must start those discussions to start to regain the public's trust. We have to show them that we are, will not only police our communities impartially, but will police our own impartially as well. Over the last 14 weeks, I've watched a group of strangers from nearly every conceivable background, race, ethnicity transform into a single family. I have seen all of you step up in the face of adversity, whether it was late night study or studies to ace a test or practical, to even taking charge of medical emergencies to care for one of our own. What I was amazed by the most from this group was a willingness to help each other every step of the way. I did not see a single person hesitate to lend a helping hand when we thought someone needed it. As I look across the stage today, I no longer see just a group of strangers. I see my brothers and sisters that I have come to love and care for. I could not be more prouder to stand on the stage along with each side of you. During the last 14 weeks, we have completed 560 hours of training that is required by the state of Kansas to, or to obtain our law enforcement certification. Throughout the rest of our careers, we will be required to complete 40 additional hours of training in a year to keep that certificate. However, I ask of you is let that 40 hours be a minimum. Don't shy away from an opportunity to better not only yourself, but your agency as well. Even though perfection is unachievable, you should try or strive every day to achieve perfection. That desire to be better could one day save your life, your partner's life, or the life of someone in your community. So class 2A2, as I conclude, I need you to remember these four things before you begin your career. I need you to stay safe, I need you to be just in your actions, but remember to be compassionate. Never give up. 
and always listen to your heart. I promise you it will guide you in the right direction. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Class 282. In addition to day two, uh, I'd like to add that every single class is tasked to complete a legacy project. Uh, class 282 decided to raise money for the Kansas chapter concerns of police survivors or cops. Uh, so joining us today is Marilyn Goodhart, the treasurer and also a survivor uh, for the cops organization. Uh, I'm proud to announce that our class was able to raise $2,350 to help the families of fallen officers. So Marilyn, would you please stand up? So everyone give a round of applause. All right, 282 basic training class from all of us here at KLATC. We thank you all for your thoughtfulness and generation to the Kansas COP organization. Um, it's a quite an impressive legacy project, so thank you. It is my pleasure on behalf of KLATC administration and staff to present you with this plaque in appreciation and recognition of being the 282nd basic class president. I hope you display this proudly and congratulate. In law enforcement, ethics is at the forefront of training and our profession. The law enforcement oath of affirmation is a constant reminder of the importance of always doing the right thing. This is something we've discussed in depth during your time here at KLETC. The ultimate purpose of law enforcement is public service. A law enforcement officer assumes great responsibility when they affirm the oath of office. They have entered a position of being a role model, leading by example. They are enforcers of the law and protectors of our communities. I will now ask class president, Deputy Matthew Cook, to lead the class in reciting the law enforcement Oath of Office Affirmation. Class 282, please be seated. In a few moments, you will be presented with a challenge coin. A challenge coin is symbolic and meaningful and given to someone as a reminder of what they have accomplished or to confirm membership in an organization. Today, this coin will recognize you as graduates of Cayley TC. I ask that you carry it with you as a reminder of the lessons learned and the friendships forged during your time at KLETC. On the back of this coin is the oath that each of you just affirmed moments ago. Carry it with you and let it be a constant reminder of always, of always doing the right thing. Graduates, it has been my honor and distinct pleasure to be your class coordinator and some small part of your journey. I wish you nothing but success and happiness in the future. I will now ask KLETC Associate Director Alvin Sowers to join me on the stage to present the members of the 282nd basic training class with their certificates. While I present each of you with a KLETC challenge coin, class president, Deputy Matthew Cook will announce the names. Front row, please stand. Marcus D. Cole, 
University of Kansas, Kansas Medical Center Police Department. William W. Dunn III, Rice County Sheriff's Office. Haley K. Bolton, Wichita State University Police Department. Devin J. Gardner, University of Kansas Medical Center Police Department. Jeremy J. Gwynn, Colby Police Department. Michael D. Garrison, Leavenworth Police Department. John A. Hamami, Lewisburg Police Department. Please be seated. Second row, please stand. Richard L. Kimsey, the second, Wilson County Sheriff's Office. Brandon A. Lewis, Lynn County Sheriff's Office. Akeel M. Love, Ulysses Police Department. Charlie R. McFall, McPherson Police Department. <laughs> Matthew A. Luter. Russell Police Department. Richard A. Messerly, Jr., Burlington Police Department. Jared L. Nickel, Metropolitan Topeka Airport Authority, Police and Fire Department. Please be seated. Third row, please stand. Andrew M. Orosio, Augusta Police Department of Public Safety. Melissa Pareda, Junction City Police Department.
Miguel A. Prieto, Edwardsville Police Department. Tony C. Reese, Lansing Police Department. Louis E. Rios, Junction City Police Department. Martin J. Showmaker, Woodson County Sheriff's Office. Noel D. Vogel, Elwood Police Department. And Matthew Cook, the Morris County Sheriff's Office. Third row, return to your seats. And please be seated. This concludes our graduation ceremony for the 282nd. I'd like to I'd like to thank all the families. It was a very interactive audience today. So uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for the support that you give these officers. I'd like to thank the uh, law enforcement partners that we have in the audience today. And I would ask the 282 to please stand. On behalf of Director Beck, I hereby certify that each one of you have satisfactorily completed the requirements to be law enforcement officers for the state of Kansas. And for the words you've been waiting for for 14 weeks, class dismissed. <laughs>